Hey, Greg, welcome to the Virtual CMO Podcast. So glad you could join us today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to talking with you. You know, I can't believe this. We're recording this at the end of July. You know, where has the summer gone? It feels like summer just started and we're already entering August. Has it been that way for you as well? Yeah, I can't believe yeah, and it feels like the year's going to end um, anytime, <laughs> sometime soon here. Yeah. I know it's just, you know, last year was so crazy and I think everybody was so excited to get into the new year, you know, start socializing again, but it's just, it's been still a kind of a crazy year. It doesn't feel like we're back to any sort of normal yet. Yeah, agreed, agreed. <laughs> well, you know what's going to be interesting today is we're going to get a chance to dive into a little bit of the subject of uh, Agile, Agile marketing, digital marketing, branding, all these good topics that we love to talk about on this show. I'm wondering just as a way of kicking things off, if you could just give the audience a little bit of a background in terms of uh, what you do and, uh, and how you got to where you are today with the Agile world. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, just brief background. I um, started in as a in the creative field. I, I and then I, I um, early in my career, I started a digital marketing agency back in the early two thousands. I ran that for about fourteen years and sold it about four years ago. And so, I'm sure we'll talk about this in a bit. Saw a lot of things change in from between two thousand three and two thousand seventeen. Um, I stayed with the company that that acquired the agency for a little while. And then um, ha ever since then, I've been working as a consultant to a lot of different kinds of companies doing everything from some marketing and, and digital strategy, but also including customer experience, employee experience, digital transformation. So a lot of big organizational change type projects and but always I think always relying on on my marketing roots, um, so to speak. To um, I, I, it comes in handy, um, no matter what you're doing. <laughs> so absolutely. Uh, so yeah. Well, I'm curious. I mean, that is a good place to start. Um, you've been at this for a while. 14 years ago, you started this agency. You said, "What was digital marketing like back then?" I'm sure there was a lot more simplicity to it than what we've got today. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so we, we started in late 2003. So, you know, going back to that time, um, Facebook, MySpace, um, YouTube, like all of these things were very new. Th I mean, MySpace was like the big, you know, the big social media platform back in the day taking over from like Friendster, I think was still even around. So, you know, yeah. this idea of social media marketing was a brand new thing. And, and I wouldn't even say that social media marketing really came into being um, for a few years. We were kind of dabbling around in that and playing around with it. We did a lot of website design, which back in the day involved Flash and involved, um, you know, wasn't as sophisticated a, a process as we, you know, there um, sophisticated practices like information architecture and UX design and all of these things, they existed in the software world maybe, but not so much making websites. The, it was a much more simplified thing. And so, you know, we, um, you know, we saw all of that kind of rise. We saw the rise of personalization and AI, you know, to make better experiences, um, programmatic advertising, you know, just all of these things. And so, you know, we weren't always the first to use these, these um, methods or technologies, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say we were early adopters of of many of those things and you know many of those trends and and everything even and even less technology trends as things like infographics being used um, in in marketing that was a new thing that was a, that was like a hot thing at one point and now it's just kind of you yes. kind of take it for granted so um, yeah I got to see a lot of things but it, it taught me. Um, to think in this this more agile mindset of you know we're never going to only be able to do one thing and do it forever and be able to make money doing that forever. I mean, social media marketing is a great example of that. Of we did very well for you know between probably 2008 and 2011 or so, we did really really well doing a lot of social media marketing. By the time 2011 2012 rolled around, everybody everybody was bringing those in, uh, resources in house. Um, and a social media marketing retainer looked a lot different for an agency, for instance. So, you know, that's just one example, but I've seen this time and time again of like a trend rises and then, you know, clients will bring it in house and then we have to find something new to bring and they bring it in house and, and you know, just kind of continues to repeat like that. 
I hear from a lot of clients uh, similar stories along the lines of, you know, we started using uh, Google AdWords years ago. We could get some fairly predictable results out of it. And it's just gotten harder and harder. But it's just a tough channel to ignore because it's so prevalent out there. Have you seen the same? Yeah, I mean, I think the one, one phenomenon is the commoditization of the consulting aspect of it or the strategy part. So yeah, Google AdWords, I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's, it'll it'll go somewhere when Google does and, and that's a, at least a few years off. Um, so it's it's there. The, I think the challenge is consultants and companies used to make a lot more money in providing consulting services and strategy, you know, strategic direction around those things. And now because so many people are doing it, First of all, you know the cost structure of placing ads; it's gotten more competitive, so the price per per word has gone up. But Google has also made it incredibly easy for someone who doesn't know anything about advertising to go in and create a generic campaign, and therefore the services of offering. And there's still room; there's still a need for strategic services around things like that. But in the client's mind, I think there isn't as much value there and they're, therefore they're not willing to pay as much for it. And so it, it kind of becomes commoditized. I mean, again, to same thing with that social media example I gave, it just, it's not that social media isn't important. It's just the value of, do I really need to pay an outside consultant versus can I bring some junior person in that used TikTok in college? And so they're going to help me with my you know, my marketing strategy, it's just, it's a perception thing, I think, in many cases. And the tools have gotten so much better. I mean, yeah, you mentioned you could launch a fairly simple campaign on Google without too much effort. I know Facebook has really beefed up some of their tools and offerings. And, you know, the level of personalization that you can do uh, and, you know, narrowing down your audience has gotten so specific that a lot of people can really find value if they put together a good campaign. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, they, Google and, and others have made it a lot easier to, you know, back in the day we were, whatever term you want to, we were hacking things to try to personalize and get, get the right ad to show to the right people. And now, which is a good thing. I mean, Google took that, all of that stuff and, and, you know, built it into their platform and, you know, any, any self-serve um, pay-per-click platform has kind of done that. And so now, I think the buyers, you know, the clients, the the advertisers have gotten more sophisticated over time because they're putting more effort and energy into digital just in general. But also to your point, the tools just have gotten, they've simplified things that again, we were spending hours of like, how would we do this given, you know, very rudimentary tools. They've just kind of built that and baked it in. And so, you know, again, I don't blame clients for not being as, as willing to pay top dollar for those things because they can they can self-serve and you know there's there's still a value that agencies can bring it just it's often in bringing new things and not not in continuing to do the same things well you mentioned something that we've talked about a lot on this show it's that there are a lot of people obviously especially younger people who are very familiar with the social media platforms they're users of snapchat and TikTok and and facebook and instagram and all that but just because you're familiar with the platform doesn't mean you understand strategically how to use it to attract new customers, to drive lead flow. And this is what I see over and over again is that people have the capability of doing something, but they don't necessarily have the strategy behind it. And I think with more and more digital channels coming on board, there's so many places where you can spend your money and therefore you can spend money very quickly if you don't really have a good strategy in place. Yeah, agreed. And I think this is where just at the end of the day, um, you can be on a million different social media platforms, you can be on a million different marketing and advertising platforms, but you've got to define what are the metrics of success. Because to your point, if the metric of success is being on Snapchat, then yes, you should just get an intern and have let them help you be on Snapchat. If that like if the bar is really that low, then sure like you don't have to spend that much to get there but if the real goal is to make more sales and drive it you know drive awareness through social media and track that and track attribution it's not always an easy thing to do that but if you're really trying to drive towards real business goals then yeah you can't just pluck somebody out of college and hope that they're going to understand the strat they may be very sophisticated in their usage of the features of a platform 
Um, and I think to a fault, a lot of a lot of colleges and universities are getting a little too platform specific and not mm. strategic enough. That's a, probably a topic of a whole other podcast. But um, but they're you know what really still ma- strategy always matters. Um, it's just when companies choose not to focus on the end results, then again bare minimum of we're there and and the, the, we use the right colors and the logo i you know i i guess that's success but long term they're going to look back and say wow we spent all this money on this stuff and it um you know gave us no return well of course it didn't because you didn't set the goals in the first place yeah and i certainly don't want to throw anybody under the bus i think some of the creativity that's out there right now is phenomenal uh what some people have done with their channels and the unique content that they create I mean, obviously, the the proof is in the pudding, as they say. They've got thousands of subscribers or viewers to their videos. But a like or a view is very different than a conversion. A conversion is sort of a multi-step process, right? A like or a view is a a one-click. And I think that's where things get broken a little bit, is that when businesses are trying to get conversions, they're trying to build that lead flow, that's, that's much harder than just getting a like. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you there. And I think that's where, again, I, I have no doubt that any any great brand or company, big or small, can put time and effort into something and do it really well. And to your point, get get likes and get followers and, and all those kinds of things. But I mean, I often say that like just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? So is being on that platform the absolute best way to drive business at the end of the day if it's not driving business it just it doesn't make long-term sense it's i mean otherwise it's a badge of honor and i'm too pragmatic a person to to believe that just having a lot of followers on a platform really really matters it used to be a gauge by which i my own agency was judged and it was super difficult to you know attribution models and everything like that it's still not simple but It's gotten a lot easier, but yeah, I just think, again, you can focus all the time and energy you want, but I mean, focus on the things that are actually moving the needle. And then if you really have time and budget left over, cool, (laughs) good for you, I guess. But um, I'd rather be moving the needle and and focusing where it's, you know, where it's going to really drive some, some activity. Yeah. And to drive that activity, you know, we're talking about sort of the history of the last uh, 10, 15 years. I mean, you look at a MarTech chart today and the number of tools is just unbelievable, which is great as a marketer. We've got all of these choices, but it's also overwhelming. And then you look at the channels. It used to be that, you know, you needed a, a, a web presence. You needed a digital home on the Internet. And maybe you did some social media or some PPC campaigns or something. But now there are so many different digital channels that you have to or you could be part of. You've got automation technologies. You've still got events and other activities. Marketing is becoming increasingly complicated. And that sort of leads me to this discussion of agile because agile is not a term that originated really in marketing, but it's something that has come up over the last couple of years. And I'm hoping that you can tell the audience a little bit about what you mean by agile and how you think it really applies to marketing and digital transformation. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I've written a few books and my, my podcast is called the agile world. And so um, you could, you could call me biased a, a bit, but I guess <laughs> just the, the, the briefest way I can talk about it is, you know, there's what I call like big a agile and, and small a agile. And so, you know, big a agile, there's, a methodology and it started in manufacturing and software development and you know it's it's really about creating processes that are repeatable that um continual optimization and and things like that and um so you know starting in those worlds people in software development it it happens that you don't use it sometimes but most most software teams and are are using some kind of agile agile approach and um i think where it where it makes a lot of sense for marketers. I think a lot of marketers have become agile and they were they were thinking in a more agile way long before even this this term of agile marketing really started being used and you know it's been it's been used for a little while but I think with more real time analytics and even Google Analytics being so ubiquitous and free and you know back in the day I mean we were using what like web trends you know just these like 
antiquated. I mean, at the time they were cutting edge, but right. you know, just you look back and you're like, oh my God, did I actually have to look through server logs to see page <laughs> hits and things like this? Now Google Analytics tells me pretty much whatever I want to know. Um, the the faster, you know, big data kind of brought us this this whole concept and idea of it was surely a buzzword, but it did bring us this idea of we've got to store this massive amount of data. And then like, okay, what do we do with all that data? Smart companies started figuring out very quickly how to give real-time insights or near real-time at the very least. When marketers started having more access to this, they started being able to make better decisions more quickly. And so you stopped saying, okay, our marketing plan for the year, you know, 2015 is going to be this. And in December, you know, it's January in December, we'll take a look at all the numbers and get back to you on what we want to do differently for 2016. It, the world doesn't work that way anymore and it doesn't yeah. need to work that way anymore. I mean, we still, there's still, I mean, we're going to sell X amount of widgets this year and, you know, there's still organizational objectives, but the way marketing is run doesn't need to be beholden to some big long, you know, at least nine to 11 month exercise of like kind of tracing back the numbers. It's like, okay, how did the campaign do yesterday? I can see that in almost real time, if not real time. So um, to me, the, the, you know, the big A agile is like you get certified as a scrum master and, and all that good stuff. And, and that's, that's still mostly in the software and, yeah. and, and some other realms like that. What I refer to as small A agile is um, thinking scientifically and methodically about change and iteration over time. And so the, the, the caveat there is just because we can see near real-time data doesn't mean we should say, oh my God, we launched this campaign yesterday and it's not doing everything I wanted it to do. Let's scrap everything and start over. Instead, it's we're going to take this, we're going to run this for X amount of time. It's not going to be 12 months, but it's also not going to be 12 hours. We're going to take this and run it for a certain amount of time. Then we are going to scientifically look back, see what worked, analyze it, and then adjust. And we can do that in you know, one or two week sprints, um, as opposed to, you know, one or two quarter sprints, which by the time, you know, three to six months pass, your competitors might be way ahead of you. I mean, the world moves way too fast these days. So that's, that's what I think about as, as agile marketing is just thinking again, not changing like willy nilly, like all of a sudden not being reactive, but being scientific, but doing it quickly and being, having the data to be able to back you up in your decisions. What's so interesting there is I think we all from our own personal experiences can see kind of who's being agile and who isn't. You know, there are some uh, companies that you may interact with that they have probably sent you a form of the same email for years, right? You right. know, they haven't changed the headline. They haven't changed the content. It's just the same thing over and over. Maybe you get it in your post office uh, box or, or whatnot. It's just the same thing over and over. And then you see companies who are always trying something different. They're uh, they're they're playing with headlines. They're playing with copy. They're playing with offers and promotions. And if this one doesn't work, then they're going to try something else. They may ultimately result in the same thing, right? Whether you, you know you you buy two and get one free, or one fifty percent off, or something, right? You know, it's right. uh, it, it it it's all just trying different things. And that sounds like agile to me. Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, a, an example I often use is um, in the in the web design space, at least, is Amazon. So, you know, when's the last time Amazon redesigned their homepage? You know, so one way of answering that is I think it was like 2011 or you know some at least at least eight to ten years ago was the last like big major redesign that they did. All of a sudden, overnight, it changes or whatever. That's one way of looking at that. The other way of looking at that is that they're constantly redesigning every page on their site every minute of every day. They're running, you know, thousands of concurrent experiments all the time. So, you know, to to your point, they're always it may it may change and then change back to the thing that they used to have, but they have the data to be able to say, you know what, saying buy now instead of purchase now makes more sales. And we tested that. We tested that in 30 different countries around the world, we know that that works. And so it's that way of thinking and, you know, just continual testing and continu continually being open to change. And I think, you know, that's the other part of this, probably the subject of a whole other podcast as well is the culture change that's required to really continually adapt, um, you know, from the inside. Cause I mean, we, 
I, in the in the marketing and creative world, it's like you know we we grew up kind of from the the Mad Men days of like this big creative reveal of wow we spent all this time on this great marketing campaign and it's gonna you know it's gonna turn heads or whatever and that totally worked you know back in the day it doesn't work anymore. There's too much variation. There's too many there's too many options and there's too many ways to collect data. So we can't have egos about this stuff anymore. It's like, we've got to let the data kind of, you know, help us make better decisions. So it sounds like, you know, the way you describe little a agile is one of the key aspects of it is you need data. You need to be able to track things and be able to report on things. And there's so much great marketing technology to help you do that, but it's very hard to make good decisions without having some data to back it up. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's for, first, it's, you know, what are the goals that we want to achieve? Second is exactly what you're saying is like, how do we measure that? And I, you know, I, in addition to the agile stuff, I got my lean six Sigma. That's a whole, you know, that that's very much based on error correction and everything like that. But when you look at the, you're basically creating statistical analysis for solving problems and not just saying, again, we want to sell more widgets, but there is a, there is a problem here at this stage in the buying process, for instance, if we're talking about marketing, what are we going to do to fix it and how will we know when it when it's achieved? And I think that's that's really, not everybody has to be a mathematician. I certainly am not, but um, you have to think methodically and, and analytically about this stuff because it's, it's simply just not enough to have good creative or just a good idea. It's got to, you've got to have the data to back it up and you've got to know what you want the data to, to be able to show you. I think one of the things that I find with a lot of marketing is it can be very kind of rinse and repeat, right? It can be very cyclical. Uh, you know, if you're a B2C brand, there are holidays. So you tend to do certain promotions and whatnot around the holidays. If you're B2B, maybe there are certain trade events or things that are happening or quarterly um, uh, results that you have to work around. But that can lead to a lot of sameness, right? It's, yeah. you look at the calendar and you say, okay, now we've got to do this. We've got a quarterly newsletter, it's got to go out. Um, and what happens is, is people stop focusing on, is this even worthwhile? Is it successful? Or yeah. do we have something that has an audience, but we're not really taking advantage of it? Yeah, it's interesting. So um, there's, and this is where it can almost be a trap when you're thinking in this in this iterative approach is, you start thinking about, yeah, what's our what's our holiday promotion going to be this year, and is it going to be better than last year? What you're talking about is who's actually a, like evaluating should we even have a holiday promotion in the first place? You know, does, right. does that even make sense? And I think I I mean, trust me, like I, it's the meta strategy. I mean, I call that that kind of thing strategy ops. It's like it's it's who's measuring that the strategy was even right to begin with. And I don't, I mean, to your point, I don't think enough people are looking at that. Um, I do think, um, and again, this is, this can be a trap in the, in the agile approach is like, you have to, it's very important to iterate. And, and if you, the holiday campaign makes tons of sense, by all means, iterate and improve it. You don't have to, you know, start from scratch every year. That's, it's nice to have a baseline to move from, but you do need to take a step back sometimes and say, are we even doing the right thing? Are we allocating the right resources to the right thing? So I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one. And, you know, ideally, you know, a CMO is looking at that, at that kind of thing, but I, I, I don't think enough are. I've seen this recently, you know, we're still on the back end of COVID. There are still some supply chain problems. Not everything is functioning as it should. And there are certain segments where there are just real shortages still. Uh, this summer, they've had real problems with things like patio furniture. It's very hard to find. It's out of stock. But then I've seen on certain websites that they're running a sale on patio furniture. Well, it seems to me it's kind of dumb to run a sale on something that you don't have in stock. Right? <laughs> because, But I think it falls into that cyclical nature. It's summer, so we run a sale on patio furniture, even though we don't have any to sell you. And that's where I think people get caught up in these cycles without even really fully thinking them through. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, that that might also speak to a disconnect between just groups within an organization. And I think, you know, that that can also go into, you know, where is the data being, you know, being consumed as well as pulled from. So in other words, if if marketing is really just looking at marketing numbers and OK, let's get more sales 
but they're not talking to you know to, to your point to the suppliers and saying, well, we have we either have too ma- too much patio furniture or not enough. Um, to me, that signals a disconnect in a very critical. You know, businesses should be smarter. I mean, this is why yeah. so many organizations are doing these digital transformation pro- projects because they they might not even know that they have such a glaring issue. Um, you know, the, hopefully somebody can identify that quickly enough, but they might not even know some of these problems that they have. But once these systems and these teams and these all of these things are able to talk with one another, yeah, marketing can be so much smarter. They don't need to push that. They should be pushing other stuff that they do have too much in stock of, but they might never know because to your point, they're like, okay, yeah, it's it's this time of year. Let's Let's do better than the last patio furniture campaign last year. Right, right. Yeah, they just fall into that trap. And so uh, with your podcast, you talk about a lot of these topics with your guests, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the Agile world, I'm, I'm really just trying to look at um, just how businesses manage change in a number of different ways. And so, you know, I talk to, to marketing and branding leaders. I talk to people in customer and patient experience in the healthcare space um, and employee experience as well. And um, quite often what ends up being talked about is is what I was just referring to is the the digital transformation piece of if only I could talk more easily to this other part of the org and understand it a little better then you know employee and customer experience are so closely related I believe customer experience and marketing are so closely related I think sometimes um, organizations make them too closely related to a you yeah. know to to the detriment of both but. Um, they are still very closely tied to one another. But you know what? If if the data is not talking and the people aren't talking and everyone isn't aligned around the customer, then it becomes really challenging. And so, yeah, I, I, I talk with with people about those kinds of topics and r- written a few books um, on similar topics as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. And, you know, as we kind of bring our podcast interview to a close here today, I'd love it if you could just share with people where they could find not only the podcast, but uh, more information about what you're doing in uh, in your consulting business and the books. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my podcast is available on uh, the major channels, Apple, Spotify, Google, um, Amazon. Uh, just look for the Agile World with Greg Kilstrom. And you can find my website where I do consulting work and um, have a blog and, and some other things as well at the agile dot world. I uh, would love to um, would love to connect with people. I also um, I'm on LinkedIn and very active. So just search for Greg Kilstrom on, on LinkedIn. Hey, that's great. And I'll make sure that we have all of that linked up in the show notes so that people can easily find you. This is really a fascinating discussion to me. I love this conversation because I think it's really next level marketing kinds of things. But, you know, given that we tend to focus on small and mid-sized businesses on this show, I think it's something that people should really consider because being agile, just as the name implies, allows you to more quickly make changes and optimize what you're doing from a marketing perspective. So I hope people will check out your show as well. Oh, thanks so much. And and thanks so much for having me. It's been great having you on the show today. Take care. Thanks.